there's a lot of people who are mad that this game is doing well. Let's go ahead and read this mm. article right over here. Some dot esports black mafu kong's shameless lack of diversity is attracting the wrong types of fans. Well, if that's the case, we need we need more type uh we need more type of these games. Uh, get, Gray, what do you feel about the just the t- uh, the headline itself? Yeah, it is another L take, definitely, because like yeah, you again we keep regurgitating the same shit every week. It's like you don't play games for the politics and uh vir- fake virtue signaling. You play them to escape those kinds of things in real life, and people just want a good single player game, and the numbers show. It, I mean, it broke records. It I don't think anyone expected it to beat Elden Ring and make it to number two, number two in all time concurrent play. That is insane for a single player game. Like, wh- what did it beat? Right? I don't even mm. have the list, but it beat so many multiplayer free to play games, too. It's like that's wild, man. That's really wild. But I, I'm glad yeah. that single players are finally getting a renaissance. Like, this should be a wake up call to those executives who only see the the Excel spreadsheets. Oh, live service makes more money. Let's go for that. Okay. F- let's f- finally, maybe this will make them see like single player games still have value and people around the world are looking for that kind of game. Yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and read this article. It says, we shouldn't be carrying hate into what should be a safe space for. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Black Moon Fu Kong just launched into uh, stellar reception, garnering a whopping 2 million players within a day, but things aren't all sunshine and rainbows. Shortly after release, developer Game Science came under fire for its streaming guidelines that reportedly prohibited uh, creators from talking about politics and feminist propaganda, which we talked about last week. The studios also faced criticism under alleged sexist comments surfaced suggesting Black Myth Wukong needed no female players alongside an apparent slew of grotesque, oddly genitalia-focused remarks. Uh, that is, uh, and we talked about too, that is a lie. Um, there was a transla- there was a mistranslation and it was purposely mm-hmm. mistranslated saying um there's so many people around me and uh you know it's hard to get an erection or whatever without people sucking my dick or something along the lines of that right but the actual translation from an actual person that's a mandarin translated to there's so many people around me that's working under me i have a feeling like people might start brown nosing that's the actual like translation Right. So, um, of course, like I'm paraphrasing here, but yeah, it's it's crazy and it's completely wrong. Somewhat unsurprisingly, this led to hordes of self-proclaimed anti-woke fans coming out of the woodworks to celebrate Wukong's lack of diversity. All it takes is a brief glimpse at the comment sections on social media to see this kind of sentiment is rife. Yo, that's one. Of, that's us. <laughs> He's talking about us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Ooh. man. Uh, most the most telling thing of all is how the screen rant journalist who criticized Wukong's lack of inclusion was bullied off the internet by rabid commenters. No one should ever face that hate for doing their job. No, they are doing their job incorrectly, right? Do you know why? Yep. They're saying, like, I'm gonna bring this up right over here. I'm I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring this up right over here. This is from the screen rant one. This is one paragraph right over here. As far as chapters one and two, while characters are clearly fictitious and fictional, I'm sorry, and fantastical creatures, there were no female or feminine NPCs, enemies, or bosses present. The only exception, if you call it a quote female, is a boss named Mother of Stones in chapter two which is nothing more than a still glowing rock with no abilities being guarded by other enemies. So this piece of shit reviewer, or you know, I guess journalist, only played two hours of the game. Two, yeah. two to four hours of the game. Now, mm-hmm. um, I'm in chapter three. And in chapter three, you meet uh, you meet one of, one of the NPCs right over here. All right? Yeah. And I'm and- and yeah, I saw ahead. you fighting the boss lady while you were streaming. So yeah, yeah, that, that's now, a lie. That like I want to see their progression. I want to see their actual like achievements to see how far they actually got into the game. Did they even beat the second boss in uh, chapter two? Right? It's because if you actually look over here, these are the girls that are in the game, mm-hmm. and the bottom right is the one that I was fighting. And yeah, Gray, what what do all of these girls have in common? Well. Okay, in their defense, they probably don't count because they're hot. 
So that, that's probably why. That's, right? That's that's probably why. <laughs> that's why. That, there are no female characters here. There's no fat, obese black women here. That could be true. See, I was fighting the bottom, uh, the bottom right, but this one over here, this one right over here is pretty hot. This group, this this white haired one is pretty hot. To be honest, all of them are pretty good looking. And do you know what you want to hear something funny? Did you know that girls like cosplaying as hot girls? I didn't know that. That's new to me. Yeah. Have you ever seen have you ever seen fat girls, fat and ugly girls cosplay as fat ugly girls? No, they usually cosplay as fat Holly Quinn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Right? And that's the thing. We are and I've already been seeing some cosplays of uh Black Mafu Kong. Let me see if I can bring it up because it's actually pretty like some of them looks pretty damn good. Yes, I saw one that looked very pretty much almost one to one with the one in the middle, the upper middle. Oh, look at oh my okay. Look at the uh, look at that one and look at this one. Wow. Yeah, that one. That one that's really good. <laughs> wow. And she look, she looks hot. All right. I'm just I, yeah. no, she she she's pretty good looking. I, I, and the thing is, I think great. I think you might be right. It's because none of them are fat and ugly. Mm -hmm. Right? That doesn't so, count. Yeah, the hot hot attractive women do not count. All right? Mm -hmm. If they're basically saying if if straight guys can masturbate to this, it does not <laughs> It does not count. Right now, right. Go back to going back to the article. Anti woke gamers assemble. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah. That, that's us. That's us. Uh, on August twenty first, uh, Puberty's Instagram page shared news of Wukong breaking Steam single player record, and the most comments are full of unsavory replies from fans. Delighted, the game isn't inclusive because it's not gay or woke. A top comments reads that which at the time of writing nearly has 4,000 likes. Quote, so proud of this game that doesn't support any gender or sexual orientations, unlike the other games nowadays. Unquote. Uh, yeah, other, uh, basically another user said the common sentiment is that the liberals are in tears and it sounds like right-wing gamers couldn't be happier. Um, I think this is true, though. It's because this guy is writing an article about it. Yep. And I've seen exactly. this guy's name too. I've his name looks familiar. We might have talked. We, we might talked have talked about him, maybe yeah. even as early as last week. Yeah, like holy <laughs> crap, man! Like clearly, this guy did not go into the later, the later things. It's because uh, it, diversity isn't a bad thing. We shouldn't be afraid of it. No, I think uh, diversity comes naturally. Mm -hmm. There's diversity of thought, and here's the thing: you're talking. If we're talking about diversity. Do you know how many creatures are in this game? A ton. Like how many? Like there's mythical creatures. There's giant tortoises. There's foxes. There's spiders. There's snakes. There's all Tigers. all of them. Yeah. And this person basically wrote a fucking essay claiming that oh how you should be, you know, pro diversity. I, like I said, pro. I'm not. I'm. I'm not against diversity. If it's natural. I'm fine with it. If it makes sense, I'm fine with it. But the thing is, that if you're shoving it in and you're talking about a company from China who don't give a fuck about what anyone thinks, you, you're not going to change anything. And the thing is, there's a reason why this game is doing so well. Now, let's go ahead and look at the Steam charts really quick. And there is a Steam chart comparison. This is sort of blurry, but I'm going to bring it up. Mm. We have Black Mifu Kong peaked at 2.4 million last last week we were talking That's about 2.3 oh no it was like 1.4 or something like that right now look at concord flint rock suicide squad zao and dustborn <laughs> man none of them even crack like twenty thousand. the fact that you have yeah. dustborn Con concord was just came out which is supposed it to be the the new overwatch killer right yeah, it's not even twenty thousand combined. <laughs> you add all those up. That's yeah. funny, dude. And Con we're gonna talk about Concord later, but man, that took eight eight years. Imagine a lot of eight years of her life, and then this happens. You see, this is the outcome of your eight years. Yeah, man, that's brutal. Yeah, I I'm glad Black Man Wukong is doing really well. Um, you know, we have people like this, hot characters. Um. Uh, the thing is that if this person was fat, ugly, and probably even bald, they'll be okay with it. It's because um, they can't identify with it. 
right? Because they have to they have to be able to identify with uh, these um, these you know, I can identify with hot girls with big tits and nice ass. No way. Where are the fat, ugly, like disgusting ball chicks, right? And this is what this is what drives them nuts. Ten million units sold. That's crazy, man. That that's and yeah. it's just gonna get better and better and better. I've seen so many guides online already. Everyone's talking about it, man. Yeah, do, do you have the data of like Wukongs all over the world? Because like the argue the biggest argument I see for this thing is like, oh, they're just mainly players in China. But as far as I know, it's number one across the globe. So I be- I believe you can actually go to st- let me actually check out the Steam charts right yeah. now for Black Move Kong. And maybe can we can we sh- can we uh uh check by demographic? I don't know if it, th- I know there is a way for you to do it. I've never done it before. Yeah, uh, me too, me too. Let me actually go to the Black Myth Wukong yeah. Steam and, page. And then, and then when it drops, like, oh, look, it dropped. Well, yeah, because they went to sleep. Dude. People have got to go to work. <laughs> yeah. Mean, you, uh, know, you know, these people are insane, man. I have never checked, but I know you can actually go and check out, like, what's the number one played game in, uh, uh, what's it called again, um, in according to countries. And uh, I don't know how to do it, but I've seen, like, people are checking out in, like, uh, U.S., like top most wish list and stuff like that. It's it's Black Myth Wukong has been have been has been you know doing really really well. I don't know how to check it actually because I've never I've never yeah, actually I, I done that either, before. But yeah, I'll probably do it next time. But yeah, that's the big. That's our older. So just majority of the players are in China, so it's not really a success. Like that, that's maximum copium already. Yeah, and the fact that it's the number one most like played game, like that's a single player on Steam. Like mm-hmm. that's pretty huge, man. Um, let them all get mad. It doesn't matter. I'm really enjoying the game. Uh, I I'm in chapter. I'm probably in the middle of chapter three right now, and I know there are there, there the fact that there are more hot women. It's gonna it's they're, they're gonna be showing up, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.